Hello viewers all over the world. Welcome to the ever increasing web feast. Eric Havwele is my name and I'm back again to share with you the word of God which is going to be of a great blessing to you. Wherever you are listening to this message from, I just want to assure you to say, listen to this message up to the end and you are going to be blessed. Uh, the message for today, I have entitled it to be as understanding the true nature of God. Understanding the true nature of God. A lot of people, they've got an assumption about God. They don't know God. They think like God is a mysterious being who cannot be explained or who cannot be understood. But no, God is not like that. God, he has decided to review himself to man so that man can be able to relate with God in a way that God has had wanted man to relate with him. So understanding the true nature of God. Now, one thing that you need to understand is that the Old Testament is an incomplete book. Not an incorrect book, but an incomplete book. It is an incomplete book which carries an incomplete revelation of God. The Old Testament does not have the full revelation of God. Therefore, you cannot fully understand God based on the knowledge of the Old Testament. The Old Testament, it provides an incomplete revelation of God. You cannot trust God based on an incomplete revelation of Him. For you to be able to understand God and for you to be able to trust God and for you to be able to rely on God, you need a full revelation of Him. And the full revelation of God is revealed in the New Testament by Christ Jesus. The, the scripture says in the book of uh, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, Amplified Version, the scripture says, In many separate revelations, each of which set forth a portion of the truth, and in different ways God spoke of old to our forefathers in and by the prophet. So, these prophets, they had the portion of the truth. It wasn't a complete truth about God, so... Moses had a portion of the truth about God. Elijah had a portion of the truth about God. Uh, 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 Jeremiah had a portion of the truth about God. Ezekiel had a portion of the truth about God. These people, they never had the complete revelation of God. What used to happen is, when maybe God would just give them a small word, he just speak something far. When God has spoken now, they are trying to communicate that message to people, they will expatiate that message, they will add their own opinion in the, in the message that God has spoken. So, out of all that communication, there is just a portion of the truth which God had spoken to them. Verse 2 continues by saying, But in the last of these days, He has spoken to us in the person of a son, whom He appointed heir and lawful owner of all things, also by and through whom he created the world and the riches of space and the age of time, he made, produced, built, operated, and arranged them in order. So, in this last days, God is not speaking through the prophets, no. He has spoken, spoken to us by in and by his son Jesus Christ. So Jesus, he is the last spoken word of God. What I mean is Jesus is the only one who is revealing God. So these prophets, they had the portion of the truth. They never had the full revelation of God. So Jesus, he is the only one who reveals God. This was the time in the book of Luke chapter 24, when Jesus Christ came here on earth, he died and he rose. When he rose, there were two disciples of his who were going to the village of Emmaus. When they were going in the evening, he appeared to them. When he appeared to them, he began to ask them, what are you people talking about as you are going? They began to complain to him, saying, are you a stranger in this land? Don't you know what happened to Jesus? Jesus was a good guy. 
he was handed over by our rulers to be uh, to be killed. He died the death of a criminal, but he was a good person. They feel like Jesus he died the death of a martyr. A martyr is somebody who is good. A person who dies for the just reason. He is a good person. But Jesus did not die the death of a martyr because he died for a sinner. So Jesus he died the death of a sinner. Now, in Libra, in the book of Luke chapter 24 verse 10, Verse 25, this, these are the words that Jesus spoke to them. The scripture says, Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophet have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. The things concerning himself. Now, how did Jesus open their eyes? How did he, he cure them from their foolishness? How did he cure them from their foolishness? He took them through a thorough study of the Bible. Remember, when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, he took these people in the closet for 40 days and 40 nights. He began to teach them the scriptures. He began to teach them the scriptures. He began to teach them the scriptures. Now, when he had finished teaching them the scriptures, now in verse 45, the scripture says, Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. He opened their eyes of understanding that they may understand the scriptures. If you want to know about the character of God, then you should be able to sit down and learn about God. You should be able to sit down in a church which is revealing Christ and you'll be able to learn about God. Now, the first word, understanding here, the one which is then opened he, their understanding. The word understanding here is taken from a Greek word called nous. And nous, it means the thinking. He, the, he opened their thinking that they should be thinking in line with the scriptures. Their eyes now were put on thinking in line with the scriptures. And then the second word, the second understanding here, which says, Then opened he their understanding that they might understand. That they might understand. The word understand here, the second understand is a Greek word called tsunami. Tsunami. And tsunami, it means putting facts together that they can make sense. Putting facts together, meaning when he when he began to teach them, he began to teach them, he got the portion of the truth from Ezekiel, the portion of the truth from Moses, the portion of the truth from Jeremiah. He put them together. When he had put them together, these people's mind now began to understand. They now took sense out of all the scriptures, and now their eyes were open that they could understand the scriptures. Their eyes were open that they could understand the scriptures. He opened their eyes that they could understand the scriptures. In the book of John chapter 1 verse 18, the scripture says, this was Jesus now talking, No man has ever seen God at any time. The only unique son or the only begotten God who is in the bosom, in the intimate presence of the Father, he has declared him, he has revealed him, and brought him out where he can be seen. He has interpreted him and he has made him known. So the mission of Jesus was to come and reveal God to man. The mission of Jesus was to come and reveal man. And Jesus, he succeeded in revealing man, in revealing God, I mean. So the mission of Jesus was to come and reveal God to us. He interpreted God. He brought God to the place where God can be seen, where God can be interpreted, where we, we can now be able to relate with God. So there will be people who be like, no, you can't understand God. No, God is a mysterious God. No, God is not a mysterious being. He has decided to reveal himself where in Christ. So Jesus is the true representation of God. 
whatsoever you see in Jesus is in God. Whatsoever you do not see in Jesus, it is not in God. Whatsoever Jesus does, that's what God does. Whatsoever Jesus doesn't do, God doesn't, that is not what God does. The opposite of what Jesus does is what Satan uh, doesn't do. The opposite of what Jesus doesn't do is what Satan does. When Jesus walked the face of the earth, he never cursed anyone, meaning Satan cursed. When Jesus walked the face of the earth, he never inflicted anyone with diseases, meaning God does not inflict people with diseases. When Jesus walked the, 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 the face of the earth, he never did any bad thing, meaning God is not the author of bad things. Remember the scripture says, every perfect and good gift cometh from above, from the Father of light, with whom is no valuableness, neither shadow nor cunning. So if there is something bad, something wrong which is going on in your life, and you have been strengthening yourself, saying it is God who is trying to test you, hey, it is not God. The earlier you subscribe to knowledge, the safer for your future. People in the Old Testament gave God a lot of names. Uh, 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 names like Ebenezer. El Elion, Makadesh, Adonai. They gave him these names based on who they thought he was. When he provides them with food, you are Jehovah Jireh. When he fights their battles, you are Jehovah, you are Jehovah Rapha. When he heals them, you are Jehovah whatever. They gave him many names based on who they thought he was. But God, he, had a, he, he wanted to establish a family with his people. He wished for a day when he was going to have children by himself. And he walked through this process until he achieved this in Christ Jesus. The scripture says in the book of Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 9, This was God saying, And I thought how glorious and honorable. I would set you among my children and give you a present land, a godly, a, a godly heritage, the most beautiful and best inheritance among all nations. And I thought you would call me my father and would not turn away from following me. So God, he had the desire of you and me being his child. He wished for the day when he could have children who were addressing him father. And when Jesus Christ came here on earth, he introduced God as the father to us. So, God is not God, Jehovah Jireh to you. He is not Jehovah. He is not Magadesh. He is not El Elyon. He is Father. Anytime Jesus wanted to talk to God, he never at any point addressed God as Jehovah. He never at any point addressed God as Magadesh. He, 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 he approached God as Father. And Jesus, he is our example. Now, is it wrong to call God Adonai? Ebenezer. No, it is not wrong. What I'm saying is, that is a partial revelation. When you're calling God by those, those names, you it is a partial revelation of God. But when you say, Father, Ebenezer is inside, Father. Makadish is inside, Father. Elion is inside, Father. So, Father is enough for you and me. God, He gave me and you the Spirit which calls Him Abba father so jesus the, the scripture says the disciples they asked him saying teach us how to pray how should we pray jesus he said when you are praying this is how you ought to pray say Abba, father our father our father which art in heaven our father so god is a father to you and me the scripture says in the book of romans Romans chapter, chapter 8 verse 15, the scripture says, For the spirit which you have now received is not a spirit of slavery to put you once more in bondage to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, the spirit producing sonship. You are not a son of God, the spirit producing sonship, in the bliss of which we cry, Abba, 
father, father. So, uh, uh, Abba, father is for the sons. Ebenezer, Makadesh is for the servants, for the people who were not born again. The people of the Old Testament who never understood God. You and me today, we call God as Abba, father. So, God is your Abba, father. God is your father. He is not Makadesh. He is not El Elion. He is father. Jesus reveals the nature of God as the father. The scripture says in the book of Philemon, Philemon chapter 1 and 6, and I pray that the participation and sharing of your faith may produce and prom promote full recognition and appreciation and understanding and precise knowledge of every good thing that is in that is in ours in our identification with Christ Jesus and unto his glory so in you there is every good thing in acknowledging where you are in Christ Jesus when you realize and you acknowledge that you are inside Jesus Christ, everything about you is good. Let no one tell you to say there are demons in you. Let no one say to you to say there are bad things in you. When you are a born again Christian, all that is inside you is of God. Hallelujah. Hello viewers all over the world. This is all I had for you. Hope you are blessed by the little I have shared with you. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Eric Habwele, that together we may paint the blue marble planet with the gospel of Christ. Don't forget also to like, comment, as well as to share this message on any social media platform, that together we may paint the blue marble planet. God bless you. Shalom, shalom.